Hi, in part one of this video, I looked at the Yudu X86 from the Electronics Maker Perspective. In this video, I'll be looking at the CPU and graphics performance of the board on Linux as well as Remix OS. So, to get right into it, I bashed the board with a bunch of Phronix tests over three days and kept track of power consumption. There were a number of areas that I tested which covered pretty much all the use cases for this board. Memory, speed and cache memory, CPU integer and floating point, SATA IO, Perl Python and Go execution times, audio and video encoding, cryptography and graphics. Cachebench, which tests out memory cache performance, came up with some mixed results. Read operations were slow by almost 50% as compared to the Tinkerboard. However, made up for it with write operations putting it almost equal with the Tinkerboard on combined tests. This isn't so bad really. Moving on to the Himeno benchmark, which is a good test of memory bandwidth and overall cache performance. It just nudges ahead of the upboard, whilst being 1.6 times faster than the Tinkerboard, 5.1 times that of the Odroid C1, and 6.4 times the Pi 3. It seems the competition is heating up now. Moving on to the S&P based RAM speed tests, the Udo was 1.4 times faster than the upboard and 2.8 times faster than the Pine64. This particular benchmark didn't have any Raspberry Pi results, so I wasn't able to compare, but it would be somewhere around the Pine64. Things changed a little when running the C-Ray benchmark, which is a good indication of floating point performance. This test also can run purely from L1 cache. No surprise, the risk based architecture does well here. Running some fast Fourier transform tests, which is another FPU benchmark, the UDU gains back some ground. Being almost twice as fast as the Tinkerboard, 7 times faster than the Pi 3, and 9.4 times faster than the Pi 2. Hmm, interesting. Another floating point benchmark, the MAFFT alignment, saw the UDU being 1.7 times slower than the Jetson TX1, around the same as the upboard and Tinkerboard, twice as fast as the Pi 3, 3 times faster than the Pi 2, and 20 times the Pi 0W. Small PT had a similar result, 2.8 times the Pi 3, 4.4 times the Pi 2, and 25 times the Pi 0W. So why am I picking on the Pi so much? Well the reason is the Pi has become a baseline of sorts, and everyone has either used one before, or knows what it is. Essentially, out of all these tests, the Udu X86 is at the most 7 times faster than a Pi 3, or at the least 1.9 times faster. If you're thinking of using your Udu as part of a compile cluster, then there were some interesting results running some compiles from SATA disk. The Apache compile benchmark came up 6.3 times faster than the Pi 3, whilst being 9 times faster than the Orange Pi 0. Whilst compiling the Linux kernel, saw it on par with a Jetson TX2. Moving on to several different compression methods, saw the performance bouncing around a bit, but generally staying on the top. The test that surprised me the most was the SQL Lite benchmark, which ended up being 3.4 times slower than the Pi 3. I had to run this twice as it just looked wrong, but there you have it. On the AIO stress test, I was getting around 48 megabytes per second on the SATA disk, which isn't really a decent SATA performance even for my SATA 1 hard disk. However, the local network loopback test left everyone else in the dust, being 17.8 times faster than the nearest board. On to language performance tests. The Google Go language benchmark showed that the Udu still has it, being 4.1 times faster than the Pi 3 on HTTP fetches, 12 times the Pi 3 on JSON, and 6.9 times faster on garbage collection whilst Perl execution ended up being around the same, but twice as fast as the high key. Moving on to video and audio encoding, shows there's a division between the CISC and RISC camp, being 7.5 times faster than the Pine64 for FFmpeg, and maintaining its position well ahead of the Pi, which is, oh, oh hang on, heck, where is it? Oh, there it is, 6.4 times the Pi3, with the Pi0w being 17 times slower. On to encryption performance, John the Ripper saw the Udu on par with a high key and Jetson TX2, but 2.4 times faster than the Pi 3, and the Pi 0, well, is trailing at the back at 17 times slower. 
OpenSSL benchmarks had a similar result, 3.9 times faster than the Pi 3, and the Pi 0, well, that's out at Whoop Whoop, which is a place in Australia that is so far away no one has ever been there. Moving on to graphics performance. I ran a bunch of graphics tests which came up with some oddball results. Cairo desktop benchmarks range from 25 times faster than the nearest board, to 1.4 times faster, to 2.5 times, to 3.2 times. I'm not a gamer at all, so I don't know if these Open Arena and World of Padma frame rates are good or not. I'd suggest checking out ETA Prime's channel for that. I would hazard a guess that it's good though. So what was the power consumption like during these tests? Surprisingly, I saw a maximum current of 958 milliamps, which ends up being around 11.4 watts. Average current draw was around 320 milliamps or 3.8 watts, and minimum current draw was 235 milliamps or 2.8 watts. Whilst this was happening, I saw the CPU temperature hit a max of 67 degrees Celsius, with an average of 46 degrees Celsius and a minimum of 23. This was with an ambient temperature of around 17.4 degrees Celsius. That's pretty decent and the lowest I've seen on any SBC so far. It wasn't even hot enough to start the fan. I think this will need a follow-up video looking at overclocking. Interestingly, I never really saw the CPU hit the magical 2.24 GHz turbo speed and only saw it reach 1.7 GHz max. This happened despite me setting the CPU scaling governor to performance mode. Even attempting to set the maximum frequency doesn't really change anything. That was it for the Phoronix tests. You can check out the full list of tests on my website or the Open Benchmarking website. So on to taking a look at the Remix OS, which is an OS aimed at making Android feel like a desktop. I picked up version 6.0 release 1 and burned it to a USB flash drive. Changed the OS to Android in the BIOS and booted from the USB flash drive in legacy mode, which does take a while, but didn't think it would take this long. So I was impatient enough to reboot and try booting using UFE mode, with the same result, just an annoying blinking logo. After checking some of the forums, I discovered this is a common issue with slower flash drives when using resident mode, so rebooted and selected guest mode, and waited for the required 5 minutes, and eventually arriving at this. Next I installed a bunch of benchmarking tools like N22, Geekbench 4, 3D Mark, and GFX OpenGL. I have to say, just from an objective point of view, this board was responding much better than any of the other boards I've looked at so far. A little bit jerky here and there, but pretty smooth. Still not as fast as an Uber gaming rig, but pretty decent bang for your buck. Just to be sure, I ran this test another two times, and ended up with a similar result. Next, Geekbench 4 CPU tests, which came up with a single core score of 912 and multi-core score of 2739, which places it around a Samsung Galaxy S5 for single and multi-core benchmarks. Running the Compute benchmark saw a score of 1031, which once again places it around the Samsung Galaxy S5 mark. Next up, the 3D Mark benchmarks, which had some smooth 3D renders, eventually landing with a decent score of 1338. The brown line is the frames per second, the purple line is the average CPU frequency, and blue is the peak CPU frequency, once again never getting beyond the 1.7 GHz limit. For comparison, I also ran the Ice Storm benchmark, which if you saw my Pine64 review was very slow. This time it's hitting around 60 frames per second. At that frame rate, everything is very smooth. Nice. Even the bouncy men had a peak FPS of 42. Ending up with a score of 11,823. The frame rate of this board is almost 10 times that of the Pine64. Next I ran a desktop workload test, which is supposed to test out desktop performance. But I came up with a weird score of 0 due probably to the video editing score. So I ran the test again, which ended up with the same result. So I don't know what's going on there. Next are the GFX Bench GL testing, which again showed up the decent frame rates. Comparing it to the Pine64, well there's no match really. 
Once again, subjective testing showed that the UDU X86 is miles ahead of other boards. I'll be running a video on graphics benchmarks soon, which will give you a clearer picture of the differences between cheap SBCs. Overall, performance placed it at around the Hawaii Mate 8. Taking a look at my power logs during these tests, there was an increase in current draw with a max of 1.2 amps and an average of 445 milliamps. So what do I think of the Udu X86? Well, the overall performance of the Udu X86 looks pretty good. I found that SATA performance is low, but network speeds are high. Combine that with decent CPU grunt, low temperatures, and low power consumption, one of the best uses of this board would be as part of a build cluster. However, the excellent graphics and HDMI and two DP ports could make it a decent media center or budget desktop. The x86 platform also opens the board up to a plethora of software options, more so than the ARM architecture. I'm avoiding giving an overall score on boards within my videos these days, as things change over time and so does the score. So if you want to see what score I gave it, check out my website. So that's about it for the Udu x86. Thanks for watching, see you next week.